The difference between mistake of law as a variety of ordinary mens rea defenses and mistake of law as an affirmative defense helps us understand what goes on in the case of People versus Moraro. Moraro was charged with illegal possession of a loaded handgun. He does not deny that he was, in fact, in possession of a loaded handgun. His first line of defense was that the statute under which he was charged did not apply to him. The statute exempts officers of penal correctional institutions. Moraro was a guard at a federal prison in another state. It was held that, as a matter of law, the exemption did not apply to Moraro. Moraro's second fallback line of defense is that he thought he was exempt under the statute. It seems he had, in fact, read the statute at some time prior to the conduct for which he was charged. The statute could indeed suggest that someone in Moraro's line of work was exempt. It reads, A person is guilty of criminal possession of a weapon in the third degree when he possesses any loaded firearm. Peace officers, as defined in section 1.20, are exempted. Section 1.20 says, uh, see section 2.10. This is a workout. Okay. Peace officer includes correction officers of any state correction facility or of any penal correctional institution. Okay, you and I might have read this the way Moraro did. Several judges had. But no, Moraro is not exempted under the statute. But doesn't Moraro's mistake negate his culpability in the same way that Smith David's mistake negated his culpability for removing the baseboards when he moved out of his rented flat? To answer this, we have to ask what culpability has to be shown to convict a defendant under this statute. The court says, the weapons possession statute violated by this defendant imposes liability independent of one's intent. This has to be taken with a grain of salt. It doesn't mean that the state doesn't have to show any culpability whatsoever. What it means is that culpability need not be shown as to the attendant circumstance that the accused is not a peace officer as defined in the statute. Moraro would surely have had a defense if there was a reasonable doubt as to whether he knew he was in possession of his gun. But there was no doubt that Moraro knew he was armed. He wants the jury to acquit him because he did not know he was not a peace officer. The court disallows that defense. The statute imposes liability independent of his culpability as to that one element. But Moraro's counsel is not done. Counsel's third line of defense appeals to a separate provision of the New York Criminal Code that creates an affirmative defense. The affirmative defense invoked here was unknown to common law, and it is distinct from the mens rea defense of the kind we saw in Smith-David and in the People v. Weiss case distinguished in the Moraro opinion. The non-recognition of an affirmative defense of mistake of law indicates the proper scope of the maxim, ignorance of the law is no excuse. That maxim has seemed to many people to be too harsh. Maybe it seems that way to you. And New York had by statute introduced an affirmative defense that Moraro's counsel wants the jury to be instructed on. A person is not relieved of criminal liability for conduct because he engaged in such conduct under a mistaken belief that it does not, as a matter of law, constitute an offense unless... Such mistaken belief is founded upon an official statement of the law contained in a statute or other enactment. Notice, official statement contained in a statute. 
Well, isn't that Moraro? The court says no. The statute was meant to track the model penal code, which had proposed an innovative affirmative defense of mistake of law. What the model penal code provision means, we will see in our next video installment.